Since ancient times, there have been numerous interpretations of the first six characters of the opening sentence of the Tao Te Ching. Due to the absence of punctuation in ancient Chinese, people often interpreted and segmented the sentence based on their own understanding, leading to different readings. Currently, there are three widely accepted ways of reading these characters. Dao, ke dao, fei chang dao, dao ke, dao fei, chang dao, and dao ke dao, fei chang dao. What do these three readings mean? And how should these six characters be interpreted? We often think that language and writing are helpful for humans, but don't forget that language and writing can also create significant barriers in our thinking. This is what is referred to as yi yin yang zhi wei dao. Showing that all the foundations of Chinese culture are based on the Yi Jing, Book of Changes. We must understand that Lao Tzu originally did not have punctuation. Because there were no punctuation marks, each person had their own way of segmenting the text. Once punctuation marks were introduced, the content seemed standardized, thereby imposing certain limitations on human thinking. Lao Tzu was unique, he specifically interpreted the Yijing for highly wise individuals who needed to have great inclusivity, extensive vision, and high cognition, in order to understand his words. Now let's begin, to interpret the first reading, of Dao Ke Dao Fei Chang Dao, Dao Ke Dao Fei Chang Dao. It tells us that the part of the Dao that can be spoken of is called Fei Chang Dao. Thus, we understand that Dao has at least two parts, one part is called Chang Dao, and the other part is called Fei Chang Dao. This becomes very clear. The part that can be articulated is Fei Chang Dao, while the part that cannot be expressed is termed Chang Dao. Because Chang Dao is a complete system, from which we can see that speaking cannot express the entirety of the Dao. We have only one time, only one mouth, so we cannot speak so thoroughly. Thus, people form a kind of situation where what you say, I don't discuss, I specifically counter from the part you have not yet mentioned, and this continues endlessly. This is a fact we have observed, and it remains the same even until today. The second punctuation reading, Dao Ke, Dao Fei, Chang Dao, tells us that as long as someone says you're right, someone else will say you're wrong. As long as someone says something is acceptable, someone else will say it's not. This is called the Chang Dao. It means that the Chang Dao always has two sides, positive and negative. However, I tend to use Yin Yang, because after all, the Chang Dao doesn't necessarily have a counter side. But we often view it as the opposite, which is very dangerous. Because it doesn't necessarily oppose, it may actually complement. So, we need to be especially careful in this regard. The third way, which is commonly used, Dao Ke Dao, Fei Chang Dao, means that the Dao expressible in language is not the eternal and universal Dao, the eternal and universal Dao cannot be expressed in language. This way of segmenting the text is highly dangerous. In the previous video, we've learned about the historical background in which Lao Tzu wrote the Tao Te Ching. If you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend doing so as it will greatly aid in understanding the upcoming content. Now, imagine you are Lao Tzu. Only then, by embodying Lao Tzu's mindset in presenting the Tao Te Ching, will you truly comprehend why it is the way it is. To whom is the phrase Dao Ke Dao, Fei Chang Dao addressed? Lao Tzu directed it to the Zhu Zi Bai Jia, saying, All of you, the Zhu Zi Bai Jia, are extremely knowledgeable and articulate, otherwise how could you become a collective voice? However, today, I, Lao Tzu, with a sincere heart, Risk offending everyone, hoping for your understanding. What you all speak of is the Dao, which is not wrong, but merely a small part of the Dao it's impossible to articulate the Dao in its entirety. This isn't your fault, it's the limitation of language and words. I only hope that you all understand deep down that the truth cannot be fully expressed. People can only express the insights they perceive and experience, resulting in partial truths, not the complete truth. I hope everyone doesn't become excessively self-important, and I also hope those who come to learn won't assume that someone's doctrine represents the entirety of the truth. To be honest, in the atmosphere of that time, the Zhu Zibaijia were constantly debating and competing. Lao Tzu, as an individual, dared to challenge the Zhu Zibaijia. People would ask him, are you claiming that what you say is the complete truth? 
From this, you can understand the situation Lao Tzu faced at that time, as even now, we still encounter similar circumstances. There's a phrase we should repeatedly bear in mind, I only have one lifetime. I only have one mouth. Not to mention I have my own standpoint. How could I possibly articulate all truths? This is a limitation. How could Lao Tzu have known the great risk involved in speaking these words? How could he have known? This is a very intriguing matter. Because from the time of Fu Xixi in China, he opened a wide window for our academic pursuits, known as the Tian Ren Zhi Xue, study of the relationship between heaven and humans. What exactly does Tian Ren Zhi Xue mean? Over 7,000 years ago, Fu Xixi observed the heavens and investigated geography, based on the eight phenomena of nature, Tian, Di, Shui, Huo, Lei, Feng, Shan, Ze, Heaven, Earth, Water, Fire, Thunder, Wind, Mountains, and Marsh. He created the Fu Yi Ba Gua Tu, which forms the foundation of the Tian Ren Zhi Xue and the basis of the Yi Jing. From this, we learn that academic pursuits begin with Tian Chui Xiang, observing the signs from heaven. We know that the heavens don't speak, yet humans live between heaven and earth. You cannot depart from heaven and earth. Therefore, you must understand them to find your path of survival. Hence, we are keen on observing celestial phenomena. Because the heavens don't communicate verbally or through written language, they authentically reveal their truths and essence to us entirely, and this is what is referred to as Tian Chui Xiao. Lao Tzu's Tao Te Ching was intended for highly wise individuals to interpret the Yi Jing. So, what were the celestial signs observed by Lao Tzu? Lao Tzu's observations of the heavens are mentioned in Chapter 41. Look how vivid this is. The means that when a highly wise person hears about the Dao, they don't react much because they understand that the Dao isn't something to be merely discussed. The Dao can never be fully articulated, will always have partiality, and is prone to self-trouble. The Dao is meant to be practiced. Highly wise individuals are diligent, step by step, understanding the Dao through practice. The Zhong Shi Wen Dao, Ruo Cun Ruo Wang, means that when an individual of average wisdom hears about the Dao, they seem to understand and yet not quite. They might think, what exactly are you talking about? I can't say I don't understand but I genuinely hesitate to say I fully comprehend. This is already remarkable because after all, you are an individual of average wisdom, which is not an easy feat. The next scenario is quite tragic, meaning that when an individual of inferior wisdom hears about the Dao, they burst into laughter. The word laughter here actually holds a dual meaning. If you understand the Dao, you feel relaxed and relieved, thinking, so that's what it is. In this case, the laughter is one of happiness. However, for those who fail to comprehend the Tao, they perceive it as impossible, and this laughter becomes mockery, ridicule. Presently, people commonly interpret this statement as ridicule. Those who listen with a face of disagreement or skepticism can still be considered relatively better. However, those who fail to comprehend immediately respond with comments like, you're talking nonsense, this is impossible, this can't be true, as if they know more than you do. They attack you before you finish speaking, they deny you before you finish speaking, they present a plethora of opinions before you finish speaking. Look, even now, many people are like this. Lao Tzu says, you are really inadequate. Your wisdom has not been developed at all. But then, he quickly reconciles by saying, however, it doesn't matter, This means that if the Tao is not laughed at, it wouldn't suffice to be the Tao. What kind of laughter do you think is referred to here? Let's summarize the above content. Different people, upon hearing of the Tao, exhibit different reactions. Some understand it and put it into action. Some seem to comprehend it but continue pondering. Others loudly laugh at it. However, this laughter might stem from either disdain due to lack of understanding or happiness from understanding. The phrase Bu xiao bu zu yi wei dao reminds us once again that everything has two aspects, just as the Yi Jing says, 
一阴一阳之味道。Now that we understand Dao Ke Dao Fei Chang Dao is Lao Tzu's message to the Zhuzi Bai Jia, and based on Lao Tzu's celestial observations, we recognize different levels of existence within the Zhuzi Bai Jia. After leaving the Tao Te Ching, Lao Tzu disappeared. How do their thoughts communicate with each other after his disappearance? What do they rely on? They rely on the Ying character mentioned in the Yi Jing. It has various Chinese interpretations. The Ying doesn't mean should; it means response or resonance. Our interactions with others rely on resonance. It doesn't necessarily depend on mouths or words. Instead of speaking extensively, it's better to convey your information through an invisible channel known as heart-to-heart -heart connection. When hearts are connected, one understands even without words. However, nowadays we overly rely on words. We feel compelled to speak continuously, minimizing the energy of resonance. This is something we should be cautious about. In Chapter Seventy of the Tao Te Ching, Lao Tzu mentioned a phrase that is worth keeping in mind. He said. 无言慎以知，慎以行，天下莫能知，莫能行。The 无言慎以知 means my words are very easy to understand. The 慎以行 means very easy to put into practice. The 天下莫能知，莫能行 means yet no one in the world can understand, no one can practice them. Why is this so? This means that both those who speak about it and those who put it into practice have issues. Look at the principles Lao Tzu talked about. They are extremely simple. He was explaining the Yi Jing, which is inherently straightforward. Why complicate it? The Wu Yan Shen Yi Zhi, and actually Wu Yan, my words don't necessarily represent Lao Tzu's personal words. He's relaying something commonly heard from the Yi Jing. The Shen Yi Zhi, it's very easy to understand, but people insist on complicating it with subjective opinions, making it hard to comprehend. The Shen Yi Xing, very easy to practice. Just go ahead and do it. In reality, we do it every day. There's nothing difficult. However, the fact remains that 天下莫能知 no one in the world can understand. Humans love to delve into academic pursuits, turning everything into a subject of study. Yet, in the end, very few put it into practice. People spend their time writing articles, researching, and the more they delve. The more obscure it becomes, the more they delve, the more confusing it gets, and the less people understand or put it into practice. Mo neng xing, no one can practice. To know but not to act, or to only cultivate without acting, is a mistake. Lao Tzu is warning us about this, but we continue to remain the same. Therefore, I hope everyone knows that the Tao Te Ching is meant to be practiced. So. Even if people use it daily without understanding, it doesn't matter as long as you can do it and genuinely apply it. We should verify and practice the Tao Te Ching in our daily lives. I believe this is what Lao Tzu risked so much for back then. Hence, next we should explore what is the true value of life. Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss out on more exciting content in the future. If you have any questions, suggestions, or want to share your thoughts, please leave your comments in the section below. I look forward to hearing from you.